Studio B at KPRC Channel 2. Houston Live starts now. Happy Thursday, everybody. October 1st? Finally here. Today is October 1st. Yes. Wow. Also, Friday Eve, as Courtney likes to call it. I'm glad you taught me that. I know, right? It just sounds better. Kinda it sounds gets us better. Kind of gives us a mindset. I always feel better when we approach the end of the week, and I always feel better when we can highlight local businesses and try a new cocktail as well. I know. So shout out to our friends over at Highway Vodka. And, you know, this weekend is National Vodka Day. so It's happening on Sunday. That's right. So today we're going to get the story behind Highway Vodka. They actually have a really cool family history a family full of entrepreneurs, right? They are helping Houstonians in need. They are the first black-owned distillery in Texas and the first hemp-based vodka, Courtney, in Texas. Distiller Ben Williams comes from that rich history of entrepreneurs, and his brother, Chris, is the chef at Lucille's, their great-grandmother, you just saw a photo of her, Lucille B. Smith, who's been called the first African-American businesswoman in Texas, and something tells me, Courtney, she would be very proud. I think so, for sure, and of course, um, Highway Vodka, their distillery is um, Cullen in the Beltway, so near Pearland. Um, we're gonna tell you all about it. Joe Sam is gonna have a full story for us, but we get to cheers to to National Vodka Day coming up on Sunday. We certainly do, and we're gonna learn uh, how to make this little pineapple express cocktail using vodka, lime juice, pineapple juice, and a splash of uh, Red Bull Tropical. That is What do you nice. think? I like it. It's really nice, right? Mm-hmm, it's good, oh, it's strong. I like it. I like it strong. Okay, we're going to have more vodka coming up uh, later on today's show, but also it's time for another trend report. I'm so excited about this. So the trend report is coming our way. Of course, our expert stylist, Marzi, is taking on this fashion challenge to a throwback style trend that's really making a comeback, and it's featuring the strong shoulder. I mean, circa 85, 90. I'm all about the strong shoulder. So can you explain the strong shoulder? Like, are we talking like a football uniform? So that's that's it right there. Oh. So you're seeing sort of the the stronger shoulder, it's if you will. It's just more pronounced? More pronounced. We're also seeing the trend of the shoulder pad, which lots of t-shirts are coming back now. So many of y'all are going to see this in the stores. And it's everywhere. Some are, you know, larger than life. I'm very excited about this. You know, back in my Benetton days, let me United Colors of, uh, we would we would triple and double the shoulder pads that were in the Courtney those used to work there in case you missed that <laughs> story at once. You would triple the shoulder pads? I mean, depending on the look, because it was, you know, everything was extra large too. You had to go oversized fashion. And um, you know, I'm I'm five feet on a good day. Mix in the, the extra po poofy hair, maybe 5'1", but, you know, sometimes you just need a little lift. Oh, nothing better. Nothing better than a good I don't shoulder. Get it. Does it, is it for added protection? It is just purely a... It's for a look. It's not added protection. From what? We're not playing football. It's a look. But where did it come from? Because also, wasn't there a time when people realized, oh my gosh, wow, this extra bulk on my shoulders, I might not need this. Maybe I should cut out the shoulder pads. That we started doing make that. make it a great day. I know. But everything in fashion, as we know, everything old is new again. I mean, bell-bottom jeans, the pantsuit. Love a good pantsuit. Now it's all about the strong shoulder. Okay, well, I'm going to just take your word for it, and I'm going to tune into Houston Life. Oh, we're on the air right oh, now. we're on. I guess we I'll learn here. something about... We never see you wrong here with the, with the fashion trend. You know, one of the things, so we have a few models that are going to test this out for us as well. Lauren Kelly is one of them. And I'm going to give you all a hint. What she really liked about it, she doesn't like to show off her arms, she says. So uh -huh. that particular shirt that we're showing you today actually goes a little longer. And so she said that she likes that, to be able to kind of cover her shoulder a little bit more yeah. and really kind of frame her body. So it's good. Okay. Well, uh, listen, I'm I'm trying to keep an open mind. I still just don't get it. 
I know. Shoulder but it's pads. So fun. I'll try some. I'll try some. The question of the day, too, we want to know which fashion trend you'd like to see make a comeback. I actually think we should have rephrased this and asked what people don't want to see make a comeback. I know. Because I have a long list of things that <laughs> mom jeans, pleated pants. Listen, it's just I, I wear mom jeans currently. No, no, you don't. No. It's just an updated version of the mom jeans. No. They're not pleated. It, it's different if it's fashionable, right? I mean, most of the time when I see mom jeans, it's on a man. <laughs> who may or may not be a coworker. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I've already started enough fights in the building today. You, you're not kidding because you actually told me that story earlier today. So. That is not true. <laughs> no, that is not true. I'm just saying that there are things that I could go without. I have been... I have been cleaning out. We've been doing fall cleaning. I don't know if I've told... I mean, people probably don't know. We're, we decided we're going to build a new house. Yes. So it's currently just dirt, but we've thought, okay, we have so much stuff in this house we need to get rid of. So I'm going through computers and old pictures and all of that. I was a mom jeans guy. I mean, all through high school, all in the 90s. Like, I, we've all been there. I mean, sometimes bad pants happen to good people. So, How were you in the mom jeans? Because that was the look in the 90s. In the 90s, you well, didn't... Well, yeah, but those weren't... Those were just baggy, like Z Cavaricci, is that what you were wearing, or like Jerbeau? I wish, I couldn't afford those things. But that look, right? The sort of harem, kind of wider leg, pegged. Harem? You know, kind of the, like, you know, droopier pants. It's sort of like a cargo-y pants. Yes. Baggy That's mom, not jeans a mom jeans. With a, with a loop on the side of my thigh, For your just hammer? in case I carried a hammer to school <laughs> with me. I mean, we had these. Trends that made no sense. And again, they didn't, I mean, shirts, instead of having the seam fit like right at my <gasps> no, shoulder, no, I no. mean, the seam was all the, I looked yes, like I baggy. was wearing my late grandfather's old clothes. They were so big. So baggy. But see, that look, that look for in the late 80s, 90s, when men were wearing, like the shoulder pads were in and that whole oversized look, and then the suit was in, really for the men, that was sort of a play on zoot suits back in the day mm. because it had sort of that lower double-breasted kind of baggier pant. So everything old is new again, it just evolves. Or I remember, you know, when uh, bell bottoms came back and my mom said, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're wearing those. Like that's, those were all the jeans that I wanted were sort of that full bell bottom, you know. I mean, everything old is new again. They're just not functional, though. Like, what is that extra fabric doing besides slowing you down? I know. Dragging down. on the ground or, like, the wind is... I mean, that was the, the thing wind about resistance alone. That era, it was the baggier the better. And I have no idea why. I mean, I look at pictures of myself and I tell my mom, why in the world did you let me out of the house like this? And, you know, that was a battle she couldn't win, right? Because... I wanted to wear it. She's telling me no, but who's going to listen to her, right? I mean, you know how it is. Yes. And We've the amount of hairspray that was oh. shellacked on the hall bathroom at home, you needed a paint scraper. Because the overspray would thing. hit the wall and the door and the carpet. <laughs> Horrific. I told you, Heather, my eldest sister, she would do, that. she had this method, right? Like many of our viewers probably did. We've seen the glamour shots and yes. the comp you've all sent in. You would take the curling iron and curl, you know, Just half, the piece. half your bangs down yes. and then the other half up and then take the, the brush and just run it through. And whatever boom, happened, suddenly you've got this large shield. <laughs> <laughs> Preparing for battle. Yes. <laughs> I look back at even my, the first real suit I ever got. I was already working as a reporter and I was covering the 2000 election. And so I was doing the political conventions and traveling with campaigns and all of that. And I remember being so excited about getting this really nice black suit. That suit, you know when like the Weight Watchers commercials come on and you someone like holds up their fat <laughs> pants from before and then they've lost all this weight? That suit was massive. But then it fit you with like a glove at the time, right? I mean, it, because it was baggy? Is that what you're saying? I mean, it. I thought it fit well right, at the time. Right, but that was the but look. But it was horrible. I it was know. horrible. It was, you know, like... Ill-fitting. It's a trend that I would not like to see come back. Again, in the 90s, people were wearing these large clothes. Giants. What's the reason? I know. No, it's okay to wear clothes that fit. I know now. Now it's all about fitted clothing. Hey, speaking of fitted clothing and the 80s and a throwback, have you heard about this American Girl doll? 
Guys, there's an American Girl doll that I swear, Courtney, you should be earning royalties for. It's called the Courtney. I am so in love with this girl, with this doll. So there you are, right there, in Next doll to the form. Next the Pac-Man. I mean, she has the side pony. She's got the pink tights. There's even a picture that I can see wearing tons of bracelets. The acid-washed The acid-washed. Sport. Oh, this is... I mean, you don't even understand. I had a moment of silence when, when um, I had someone on Instagram me message me this picture of the Courtney doll. And I, I mean, complete with the stack of bracelets is what threw me. Oh, because man. I have been wearing the stack of bracelets since, I don't know, eighth? Eighth grade? Wait, jelly bracelets? Jelly. I mean, you don't even understand. They, at one point, they were up to my elbows. Wow, speaking lace, of not Lace, fingerless, being lace gloves. Didn't they get in the way of things? No, it was fabulous. Seriously, this makes me so happy, and the, the amount of outfit changes that this Courtney doll has. She's living the dream. She's living the dream. So are you buying one or what? I need it. I'm going to have to. Yeah. I'm going to need it. That'll be really nice. Where we'll are you going to play dolls it? later. In my living room. <laughs> There's that Speaking lady of things I don't need. Too. I know. Buying a doll. Oh, I that's know. okay. But it's so cute. Uh, maybe there will be a Derrica doll one day, too. I hope so, but let me tell you something. Those dolls are not cheap. Oh, I know. There used to be one of those stores by my old house, and you would see these girls walking around. I mean, that's like gold. Right. Aren't those dolls like more than 100 bucks a oh, piece? Oh, yeah. And then yeah. by the time you buy the matching... I mean, match yes. Don't people buy matching? What do you well, mean matching? Oh, you like can the, match your doll. The oh, human. No. Yes, uh, absolutely. There's an off-the-shoulder sweater, sweatshirt happening already online for that, for the Courtney doll. But uh, maybe I'll just wait for the... The duped version, Courtney with a K or something to go out. <laughs> what? On the last season of Kardashians, I'm... Courtney with a K, the long lost sister, that could be you. Why I haven't know. we thought of this before? I don't know. Long lost cousin, I don't know. We need to make that happen. I know there's already a Courtney, but there could be another Courtney. Our oh producer, God, Heather, I have so... to really, like, <laughs> talk like that again. I just can't There are times believe. behind the scenes when I wish you guys could hear our producer, Heather, <laughs> chatting with us. And today is a great day on this October 1st because Heather Consteiner has been named Employee of the Month here at KPRC yes, Channel 2. We are so proud of her so hard proud. work. Heather, and look at that. We just happen to have a camera. <laughs> Grab that handheld mic. How do you feel? How do you feel being the Employee of the Month? Oh, sometimes sometimes technical problems happen to really to good, good people. people. I don't know if that the mic control is room can't on. even help her. Yeah. Um, oh boy. Welcome to Houston Life, everyone. Uh, the mic person we're gonna, didn't. We're didn't gonna work on hit that. the button. We're gonna work on that. Can, but we, Heather, can we get Heather a Zoom call, maybe? Heather, maybe we can. If you can hear us, nod your head, and if you know how much we love you, <laughs> nod your head. You do oh, know that. Oh, we love you. Congratulations. She is fantastic. Heather has been working so hard, especially during this weird COVID time. Look at her. She's like, oh, my gosh. Take the camera. I wonder me. if my husband Chance is watching at home. <laughs> Wrap it up. Move along. Move along. Heather she is, is great. She is fantastic and has not had a day off in uh, I don't even know how many months. M many, many, many months. And we could not fly this plane without you. So we're so proud of you. I think it's really only the second person on our team to be the employee of the month. We got to up the game here. <laughs> Are you surprised by that? And Heather, what we're trying to say is please don't ever quit your job. Don't ever leave. No, that would be. Don't ever leave. Be Cheers. Bad times. Cheers. <laughs> We can't even get the microphones to work when you do work here. So imagine how bad it would be without you. Exactly. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> nice. So have you heard about this uh, thing where you can go as an influencer to rent out space in a private jet so you can just take pictures and make everyone think you're you actually own the jet? Own the jet. Have you heard about this? I have not. Guys, it's a thing. So people go to many lengths to make their lives look really, really fabulous right and we've laughed about this instagram account called influencers in the wild oh it's so good where people post pictures and videos of other people taking pictures and videos right maybe sometimes risking their lives walking into traffic jumping off bridges doing all kinds of stupid things because they think it's going to look great on social media well now i guess one of the things is that you can rent out a jet to make yourself look really cool well i'm i'm surprised that are they really usually these are sort of exchanged things so the influencers are actually th there's a money exchange here oh i don't know i'm not an influencer and i don't know them but you were saying that a lot of 
influencers will go to stores, buy clothing, take the tags off and wear it, take photos and do the whole thing and then go back and return it? Mm -hmm. Isn't that kind of bad? Yeah. So that really happens. I How do you know this? I have a friend who works in retail. Okay. I have a couple friends that work in retail and and they were telling me sort of the deep dark secrets of the influencer world. So maybe if there's a big sale happening at a store and you know that maybe only happens once or twice a year or something like that and like the Nordstrom sale so <clears throat> they might go there and just you know show you their picks and just do it all in the dressing room and not actually ever buy anything so just kind of eat up the time there and then remember the people that are working there work on commission so they're trying to make sure that you're buying something wait a minute so people will go in and camp out in a dressing room for like an hour and do a full-on photo shoot mm -hmm. and then there's then there's people that buy it um and our, our doors open we're hearing some ambient noise if you hear just, background noise don't it, worry we yeah. hear it too um so it um yeah and sometimes they just return it after they get all their photos and yeah they just return it wow that is not cool Here's the thing, returning stuff is such a pain. I, 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 you know I'm incapable of doing it. <laughs> Are we going to complete sentences here? I, I would rather I, drop something off at the thrift shop and donate it. I'm I do it so all the time. I, do, I, I can't go through that whole process. Sweet Brandon will, will make a return. Or I'll find somebody to give it to, quite honestly. You yeah. know, whether it's sending it to somebody I know, giving it to a friend. Amy Davis is here. She's like, I'll take it, I'll yeah, take it. We'll, I, we'll, we'll work out a deal. Amy. I'm horrible at returning stuff. Really bad. So am I. I went to go, I bought something, we're getting a wrap, but I bought something during COVID, didn't like it. It was in the bottom of my closet. I thought, oh, I'm just going to take it back now that things are open, which by the way, I think I had it for three months. I bought it from Loft and I didn't pay attention to the time limit on there. And when I went to go return it, they said, oh, do you want to look around? I said, I don't really have time right now, so I'm just going to do the return. And because it was so late, so long. It, was, like, no, you can't it was $6 that. that I got back. And I said, well, <laughs> Does anybody in here want this? I mean, I felt bad taking the $6 because... You have a perfectly good article of clothing. Yeah. Well, next time, give it to Amy Davis. I will. I will. Hey, I don't think you would have liked it either. Speaking it of Amy good. Davis, we're going to do something really fun. Amy Davis is joining us once again on Houston Life. She's joining us in studio. And you all know and love her. Since 2015, she has put 175 products to the test. Wow, that's a lot of work. During her Tested Tuesday segments. And Courtney, today, you and I will get in on the fun trying some of her latest finds. Are you down? I can't wait. And I love these flashback pictures of your kids. Okay. They're so little. We're going to do it. <laughs> right after this. Oh, there she is. <laughs> you know what I love about As Seen on TV products? The commercials. I mean, really, they create products to solve problems that don't actually exist. Since 2015, I have tested or supervised tests for 175 products. Yeah, I'm kind of a big deal. The best tests are definitely the flops. Oh gosh, that's hot. Okay, one, two, three. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> you are kind of a big deal, Amy Davis. We <laughs> totally agree. Thumbs up or thumbs down? That is the question we are answering today with the help of KPRC Channel 2 consumer expert Amy Davis. You all know her as the resource to help save you time and money, have a little bit of fun. And today, Amy, you are letting us join the fun and I'm a little alarmed because I know nothing about what's about to happen. We have an egg theme going on. I mean, so the whole thing started as a way, you know, people see something in the store and they want to buy it, but they don't really want to spend the money on it because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Right. This is the egg sitter that you have. And so it's supposed to be, it make any seat comfortable because it absorbs the shock into so like truck drivers or you're going to a basketball game or football game sitting on bleachers and yeah. you're hard and uncomfortable. So. It's so squishy and absorbent that when you sit, it will absorb the shock and that egg won't break. Are you sure about this, though? Well, you're going to test it. And I think I have seen this. I'm just going to hold up just the edge right here. So it is kind of this squishy, squishy material. like foam. What's the price on this? This is $39.88 at Walmart. 30, so that's quite an investment. I mean, before someone goes out and spends some yeah. th that kind of money on something that may or may not work. Right, because you don't want to have to just toss it if you spend 40 bucks on it. True. So here's your chance, folks, to see if it works. To see. And don't be, like, gingerly about it. Like, sit down how you normally would. Right? Take a seat. <laughs> And drummer. And that is a real egg? That is a real egg. Oh my gosh. 
I didn't bring a change of. Okay, you I'm didn't? just. I don't think you're gonna need it. I think it works. I shouldn't sit slowly. Go. Okay, I don't like this. Does it feel like you're laying an egg? Ew. <laughs> He's like, what does laying egg feel like? So I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything, and I'm pretty sure, I mean, I can feel, I can feel a firm, I can feel a bit of firm pressure on my left Buttic. buttocks. Oh, then you actually sat on, yeah. I'm sitting on the so egg. So we did test this before. I know some people tried to sit where it was like, <laughs> in their, you know. In the middle? Right. In the middle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but he actually got a buttock on it. Okay. Well, so, there you go. So that works. How about okay, up? So can we stand up stand now? Up. Well, I can stand up now. See, look it. And it absorbed. But still, my question, though, is can I... <laughs> <laughs> Love these sound effects. Can I actually sit on it without the egg? Yes, to see if you like it. It's I sort mean, of like... It is definitely more comfortable without the egg. Yeah. Yeah, I could, I could see sitting on this. And you would, you know maybe carry it around with you or if you had to sit no. for long periods of time like you could keep it at your job like somebody who has an office job that maybe not a very comfortable chair yeah maybe keep it at your desk but in terms of like carrying it around amy no i in doubt a bag like probably wouldn't go here i am with my <laughs> exeter um well that was very nice and sort of yeah, alarming right. thank you so much I'm amy i'm gonna let you keep that that is your prize for testing it for us live on Houston Life and well, let me come on today. Thank you so okay. much. This thank is the you. best day of my life, Amy. Lovely. Amy Davis. Thank Amy you. Davis. Okay. okay, we're not done yet. Okay. So Courtney, you yes. have also an egg theme. Do you boil eggs often? Do your I do. Does your family eat hard boiled eggs? Yeah, we love them. Okay. I love them too. All right, and then peeling them. Totally pain. Yes. So this is the easy egg, okay. it's easy eggs. It's supposed to be able to shake the shells right off the eggs. You don't have to peel them. Okay. You can put up to three eggs in here at one time, shake them for five to 10 seconds. And then when you open it, it's supposed, the shells are just supposed to come right off and get naked eggs. Okay, I'm all for it. Okay, what's in here now? So that's water. The water needs to stay in there. There's like a little fill line. So we've already done that for you. Okay. And we had napkins either way so that, you know. So do you recommend that we put all three in? Yes, okay. yeah, let's try all three. All right, let's do all three. The right amount of water. And then you shake, I don't, okay. And then you kind of turn it, twist it to close it. There you go. Okay. Like a shake, like a martini like a, shaker? Yeah, like on the commercial, one lady does it with one hand and then somebody else does it with two. Okay. 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000. You can keep going. We'll do 10 seconds. Okay. Okay. I think that's good. All right. Okay. Well, I'm seeing something has really? happened in here. Yep. So when you touch them, which I know you really want to do, right? Um, do, do the shells slide right off? That's what happens in the commercial. Actually, okay. in the commercial, they were off already. No. Like some of them are off. We broke an egg in uh -huh. one of them. No, this is just as, I mean, if you can, I don't know how close we're getting on this, but it's in little see. pieces. It's like it completely cracked, but Which they're tiny. Which makes it harder, it right? It does. Because they're not coming off in whole, like, you know, four or five seconds. Yeah, I mean, look at this one's completely smashed. Oh, wow. that's a bummer. That's a bummer. And yeah. then this one, there is part of the egg. Uh -huh. Maybe maybe it works better with just two eggs instead of three. Maybe. I will tell that you they're that they're recommending. I also tested this one, and I got the same result. So I was a little bit nervous about you guys testing them, and, like, the egg would break on Derek, and yeah. this would be perfect. <laughs> I know. But here's the thing. I mean, this is wouldn't save us any more time, I don't think. I think it's more of a hassle. Exactly. That's exactly what I found. Okay. So this is at Walmart 988. Uh-huh. So I'm going to say peel our own eggs. Exactly. But I'm kind of digging the seat thing because that's great for stadium seating. I mean, it doesn't help with your back, but, but it just like it's supposed to provide like support for your for everything. Yeah. Guess, it, so maybe Derek will let you borrow that since yeah. you didn't think it was cool enough to carry around. I know. Okay. I love it. Amy, I will tell you, I watch your segments all the time. I have for years. and I love it that you're able to do everything, kind of test it out because that's the thing before we buy it. We definitely want to know if it works. I mean, yeah. you love doing this stuff. I do. It's fun. My kids do it with me. They like doing it. Now my nine-year-old said the only reason that people watch it so often is because we're on there so much. I mean. Like, okay. <laughs> I think he's going to start requesting part of my paycheck. <laughs> sassy. Sassy yeah. little nine-year-old. I can't believe how big they are when we were looking at the videos of um, how little they are. Piper, oh my gosh, thank you. Yeah, there are some of them like when she, so she's six now, and there's the, and there she is. I'm holding her, and she's like probably not even a year. Oh my yeah, word. Yeah, that's Tommy as a baby. He's oh, five. Right? They are so cute, Amy. They grow up so fast. But I love that you do all this stuff. Do people send you ideas too, or you find all the stuff? They do. No, people send ideas, and so we started it as as seen on TV Tuesday, and then I felt like we were doing so many tests that they weren't making enough products for us to keep up with.
with and people would send they'd see Facebook products and I'm like well it's not really as seen on TV so now it's test it Tuesday it doesn't have to be an as seen on TV product it could also just be something that you see anywhere um, so I need ideas right because a lot of these products that people see on Facebook I order them and it takes four months to get here oh, that doesn't help no. So, right. no we need other stuff that we can get to right away right, exactly. now all the past ones that you've tried all on YouTube yes so we have them on our KPRC our um, KPRC to click to Houston YouTube page and then there's a special section there with all of the as seen on TV videos preloaded so you can watch them all it's fantastic mm -hmm. Amy it's so good to see you in person girlfriend Thank I think you. it's been a couple months since I've actually seen you yeah I know and I'm I know you want to go on by now and you want to go to bed well I'll, you took the drinks away that's um, well we can get you a sip. <laughs> that's not a problem we've got more by the way if you have a product you would like Amy to test as you just heard she needs more just send an email to a davis at kprc.com great to see you thank you thanks Amy. Have a show. all right still ahead guys we are talking the trend report it's all about styling for the strong shoulder but first a look at what's coming up on channel 2 news at 4 that's next Welcome back. Now let's get a check of today's headlines with Keith, Christine, and Justin, ahead of Channel 2 News at 4. Hey, guys. On this Friday Eve, great to see you guys. Yes. Hey. Little Friday, we call it sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Little Friday. That's right. We're, we're Friday. almost there. It's like a teaser, but man, the, the weather is beautiful out yeah. there, Justin. Justin, another good one, man. Wow. Yeah. It's a nice one. It's a little warm out there this afternoon, which is kind of funny because now we're whining about how warm it is, right? We're like, oh, it's about 80. It will be. Just wait. We've got another front on the way, too. I sound just like that when I whine. I want everybody to know that. That's what it, see, Christine Keith know. They know when I don't get my way. That's what I sound like. So, 88 right now. So, it's a little warm out there, but you notice the humidity's up just a touch as well. It's a south wind. That's important because that's going to switch once we get this front to move on through. You won't know it's out there. It's not going to bring any rain, but it is going to take these 86s to 88s and push them back down closer to about 80 degrees. So generally as we get into the evening and overnight hours, we'll see the wind start to take that northerly flow again. That's important because that will push everybody back down into the upper 50s and low 60s by tomorrow morning. And then as we get into the afternoon, look at that, right at about 80 to 82. So much more comfortable forecast and lock that in for the rest of the weekend too. It's going to look real nice. Nice fall weather for us here. Here comes the secondary shot, one coming in on Sunday. And this one's actually going to be important, even though it won't bring any rain or do anything to us. It's actually Actually going to help block this little area of low pressure that may turn into a tropical depression by the time we get in towards early next week. Looks like it's going to try to steer it in towards the Bay of Campeche and down into northern Mexico. This is the time of year, guys, when these fronts get real important for us out there because they can kind of send all these little late season systems out of the way. So we'll keep it right at around 80 through the weekend. Not too bad. Touch warmer for the Texans game as well for some of the fans heading in. And then a second front coming in on Monday, and that'll keep uh, things fairly quiet as well. And in fact, I'm going to go all the way to the end of the 10 day to find any kind of rain chances. Well, very good, yeah. Justin. Thank you. Some really good football weather, Texas yeah. football. And coming up at 4, we're going to be talking about fans who can return to NRG this Sunday for Texans football. We got a closer look inside the stadium today. We're going to tell you about the changes you will see if you are one of the lucky ones heading to the game, including mobile ticketing, how concession stands will work, and how they will handle social distancing. I know a lot of fans happy about heading back to NRG. And this one has a lot of people feeling and talking today. It's a tough conversation conversation but an important one to have. Chrissy Teigen and John Legend have lost a baby due to pregnancy complications. The couple has posted the news on social media and received and has been receiving an outpouring of support. Many thanking the couple for talking about such a difficult topic. Coming up at four o'clock today, reaction from a local mom who has lost a child, how she's helping others and how she says Teigen's post is helping. Uh, our hearts go out to them for yeah. sure. Man. Um, we also know trick-or-treating is going to be coming up soon. It's going to look a little different this Halloween in the wake of COVID-19 at 4. We will take a look at some of the more creative ways homeowners are getting ready to hand out candy this year. That's <laughs> one way to do it. Shoot it at kids I this know. year. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Check that out. All they got to do is go to a college campus, go to find a fraternity <laughs> house, man. They've been doing that for, for you know four what? years since I was there. Come on. I think you're right. It's a bastion of creativity. I know. Right. I know. <laughs> exactly. We've got to have Halloween. Halloween at some point, for sure. We do. Thanks, guys. We'll see you at four. And after the break, a convenient new on-demand nail service app that's bringing personal care right to you. Lauren Kelly is giving us the lowdown on Cherry's mobile services after the break. Welcome back. Whether it's getting your hair done or getting a manicure, so many of our pre-COVID self-care routines have been put on hold over the past few months, and now... 
many of us have kids at home or maybe you're just not comfortable going out yet. Well, we did find a solution. The trendy new Cherry On Demand mobile naval service. Well, it's just like going to a salon, but way more convenient. Lauren Kelly is giving it a try today. And I see you're getting your nails done. Hi, Lauren. Hey guys, you know, tough, tough day at work today, right? I had to get my nails done to try this out. Let me tell you, it's been seven months since I had my nails done. Please do not zoom in on the status of them just yet. But this is my technician from Cherry. This is Susie. She is just rocking this all the way. She's completely masked up. She's got the gloves on, the sanitized tools right here. It's been amazing to see the setup so far. And I'm here with Catherine Durkin for Cherry Mobile Nail Services, who's going to give us a little background on how this whole thing came came about. Yeah, absolutely. So Cherry is an on-demand nail service app that was started by Amber Vins Box of Rewards Style and Like to Know It, who between her career and her kids had no time to get a manicure. So she thought, you know what? I'm going to modernize something that can come to me. Absolutely. So. All these all these moms are at home right now, yep. whether they're homeschooling their kids or they just are not comfortable going out just exactly. yet. This is a perfect way for this mobile service, the mobile nail service, yep. to come to your house or your office. They do bachelorette parties they do baby showers right. uh, but they're all still very safe and socially distant and all sanitized like we said Absolutely. Um, but you got to tell these guys about the services because it's all of the same nail services right. just coming straight to you exactly so it's just like going to a nail salon you can get classic gel or dip they'll bring all their supplies so this kit that you see in front of you. Look Susie at the setup. The setup house. is amazing. <laughs> I was Susie so will... excited to see it. <laughs> and she can perform all the services you need. All you need is a comfy chair to sit in and a place to hang out. And maybe if your boyfriend or husband is at home or one of your friends wants to join you, you can actually, through the app, add in a friend and you can get your nails done together. It's a cashless way to do things, which exactly. makes it safer, more sanitary. Uh, and, you know, all of the things are just three clicks away. You book your appointment, you book your technician, and you give them your address and then they come to you, right. right? It's convenient. And just like an Uber, you just three clicks, you book. But more than that, it's just convenient and it's a convenient choice, but um, it's engineered for social impact. So these technicians are allowed to work whenever they'd like. Okay. They have financial independence and they can earn more from this. So is there anything that I need to set up in my house before my technician arrives? Nothing at all. Just no. find a place that you'd like to hang out and get your nails done. She rolls in with her case, right. she brings all the supplies, and basically the hardest decision that you're going to have to make <laughs> is right choosing here. the nail color. <laughs> and of course, I'm in a wedding in a couple of weeks, and I thought, you know, I would really like something nice and pink that would match everything. But then yeah. we're like, no, 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 no. I need something bold. It's been right. seven months. So of course, we went with the cherry red <laughs> but really whatever color you desire exactly. um, you can go through on the app I'm sure and pick your color or you can just select one once right. they come so it's in. just so convenient and it's it's great for for moms or ladies or guys on a budget that's that's really going to be helpful and you guys are offering a little bit of a discount for Houston Life yes. viewers tell yes, us about it so we're offering 10% off for all Houston Life if you use the code you can book if you download the app then you can book well, Catherine, thank you so much. Susie, thank you so much. She's so wonderful. She's going to make my nails beautiful again. I'll be able to walk out and wave to people without being embarrassed. Uh, HoustonLife.tv, I've linked the app for uh, the Cherry Nail Service. They'll come straight to you. So I might be here a while, you guys. Derek and Courtney, I'll see you at the studio maybe later on tonight. <laughs> okay, we can't wait to see the finished product. I also think it's so great as these businesses have evolved during COVID that a lot of these nail techs can get back to work so that's right. fantastic lauren thanks exactly mm -hmm. all right exactly. still ahead on today's show ahead of national vodka day this sunday we're taking you inside the first black owned distillery and learning more about its rich family history but first are you ready to jump on the next fashion trend that's hitting the stores right now it's all about the strong shoulder details next Welcome back. It is time now for the Trend Report. And today we are looking at a big trend in stores right now. And brace yourselves, people. It is all about the strong shoulder. Absolutely. Hello, 1980. Remember the power suit, the shoulder pads? We're seeing the comeback of it all. And are you willing to try it? That's the question. But we're putting this trend to the test. Welcome to another edition of Trend Report with my girl, Marzi. <laughs> okay, is the trend
Can report camo? Because clearly we got the message. Well, I mean, we're still on trend, but that is definitely not what we're doing today. Okay. We are talking strong shoulder. Oh my gosh, I love a strong shoulder. It makes me makes me think of the 80s. Yeah, 80s, 90s, and current day. So the last trend report, I styled the girl with the tie-dyed shorts and I put that shoulder pad t-shirt on her. I saw this shirt at Frock Shop and I thought it was kind of good little gateway into the trend if, you know, some people are still kind of leery about wearing a shoulder pad. So, I have these two shirts and this is going to be the challenge of the day. Okay, I love a good challenge. By the way, we do have two special guests, two models, quote unquote, right? Our friends, one we know and love is Lauren Kelly. She is always up to a task or a challenge, I should say. Right. So she's gonna come in and check that out. Plus we have Brandy, a busy mom of two. Influencer. Influencer extraordinaire. Extraordinaire. <laughs> But I'm gonna start, so I, I guess you want me to pick the color, right? You did tell me to bring some things from home. Yes. I have brought a couple bottoms, a pair of shoes, but now I just have to pick the color? Yes, so you're gonna pick a color. And I want you to keep in mind that, yes, it has a double sleeve. Yes, it's, you know, a more, you know, on-trend shirt, but you need to think about it as a T-shirt. What would you wear with a T-shirt? Okay. Break it down. Tech you know, I would tend to go right to a black t-shirt because I have tons of them. Uh -huh. I and don't... I would tell you to do this one because people will see it more. You want to see the detail. It stands out a little bit more than it would in a black shirt. All right, I'm ready. Challenge accepted. Oh, hi. hi, hey, Marzi, hey, Courtney. Hi. Step into my office. I'm my so glad office. to be here. What's going on? So I have a shirt for you to style. Okay. Voila, this is it. I'm wearing it. Uh, we have two colors for you to choose from. Ooh, they're both so pretty. There's a beige and a black, but mm -hmm. I, I bet Courtney knows which one I'm going to be swayed with. The black one. <laughs> I have a stronger shoulder in the black. <laughs> favorite Brandy. My favorite Marzi. Thanks for coming today. My Vanna White here has your two <laughs> color options for you to choose from that you're going to take home and style how you would oh my gosh. to go out. I you think I'm going to go with the cream one, like a little so bit oversized. Yeah. yeah, so we can be twins. <laughs> All right, guys, so what I did with this top was since I chose it in black, I paired it with a bold color of pants. And I love for the fall, maybe into the winter time, this deep cobalt blue. I think it's a great color to match with something just plain and black like this. I also threw a long necklace on and some big hoop earrings and pulled my hair back because it's such a strong shoulder shirt that I wanted to show it off. And the more you pull your hair up, the more you can do that. Put on with some black booties and voila, this is the outfit. I actually love it. Thank you to Courtney and Marcy for now making my style look fabulous. I decided to style this look with a pair of really deconstructed jeans and a light wash just to keep the whole entire look pretty light and these kind of combat style boots because I feel like the sleeve gives you structure and it has a very strong feel. It's got the double sleeve. So I just kept that strength going throughout the entire look with the shoes and a nice beige pair of sunglasses to top it all off. So it's casual, cute, and it's very easy to pull off for anyone. I think the ladies did a great job they really styling, yes. right? They all look great. And this is good for any body type? Everybody. And then it's also, you know, you think about it, like what Lauren said, it, if you're worried about your arms, it, this particular one is really good for kind of covering the upper half as some of us are kind of insecure about as well. Okay, I love it. I'm in. Get it while the trend's hot. <laughs> Another trend report with Marzi. Thanks, girl. Loving my strong shoulders. We work out. <laughs> <laughs> so that top is available at Frock Shop in both colors, a local business, micro business. So go and give them some support if you'd like to add the strong shoulder t-shirt to your wardrobe. Everyone's going to be wearing this t-shirt around town, but the good news is it looks totally different depending on how you style it. Don't you think? Yeah. I know. So it's earlier super fun. today, sorry to jump no, in, no, no. but we did ask our viewers which fashion trend you would like to see make a comeback. Patricia writes in denim miniskirts. I love That's it. That's pretty classic. Absolutely. I agree. And Donna wrote in 
Preppy look, loved that little pop collar. Mm -hmm. And Becky writes in, definitely big hair. The bigger, oh, yeah. the better. <laughs> so true. <laughs> We're going to need photos of all these trends. Maybe I know. On, on the I remember next back show. in the day, I used to use baking soda to get all the hairspray out of my hair. Mm hmm. Because you had water, it's like glue. Baking soda was able to get it out. Really? Yeah. Don't act like you didn't have extra gel. You have taught me so much. <laughs> <laughs> use the baking soda tonight. I got a lot of goop in this mop. <laughs> okay, after the break, we are showing you inside a local distillery that's the first of its kind. That's coming up next. Well, a cheers is appropriate because National Vodka Day is coming up on Sunday. And if you're thinking about stopping by a local distillery, well, we've got just the bottle for you. We sure do. It is called Highway Vodka. And as Joe Sam shows us, the strong family history behind the business is the secret to its success. Buckle up because we found a really great distillery to help you celebrate National Vodka Day. Let's get going. Welcome to Highway Vodka. Let's go inside, take a look. Co-founder Ben Williams showed me around the renovated barn turned distillery and how their special hemp-based vodka is made. All right, so National Vodka Day is this weekend, and I am at one of the best vodka places here in Houston. So you have to tell me a little bit about all of what you guys do here, Mr. Ben. I want to get into the specifics of it all. Where did it all start for you, and what was the main thing you thought about when you said vodka is going to be the business? Well... It, it started just as a hobby with my partner and I just making stuff for fun. Just wanted to do it because maybe we like to drink a little bit. Yeah, who you know. Like that? And so <laughs> you know, it just got to be a process trying to see like you know, let's make something ourselves and bought a little still and set it up and started going from there. But it didn't just start there. Ben partnered up with his brother, Chef Chris Williams, to open Lucille's restaurant in 2012, a 1923 mission-style home in the Museum District. According to the brothers, their grandmother, Lucille B. Smith, was one of the first African-American businesswomen in Texas and has a long history involving the civil rights movement, meeting Dr. King and several other politicians. And now, Highway Vodka is following that tradition and has become the first first of its kind. Talk about your family and being the first black vodka distillery here in Houston. This is awesome. Fortunately, my family um, just come from a long line of entrepreneurs, you know, starting off with my great grandmother and beyond that, actually. But uh, she was a really famous caterer and chef named Lucille B. Smith. Uh, my brother and I uh, actually started a restaurant in her namesake, picking up a lot of her legacy and history that we're so fortunate to have. It's time to see how it's made from step one all the way to sampling that I'm just dying to get to. We cook everything up in the mash tun using our blend of just hemp, corn, and water. That's it. And then uh, we cook it all up from there, take it into the fermentation area, let it sit for about a week and a half, you know, depending on the weather. Then we take it to where you saw in the still and do the actual run. Mm. And that where, you know, the differentiation starts to happen because we only collect the hearts of the run. That's the sweetest part. That's the, that's the most pure part of the run. From there, we got to see how it's bottled, labeled, and ready to mix in a tasty cocktail. So we're gonna take Highway Vodka here, pour you up a shot, some juice. Just give it a squirt of lime juice. Add a little bit of ice and a splash of energy drink, and we are all ready to taste. Hey, Mr. Ben, Miss Cody just hooked us up. She did. Some tasty drink, so cheers to yeah, you. Yeah, man, you too. Thank Damn. you for being here. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Woo. <laughs> oh, yeah, now, this is good. With everything that we do, is just like a real grain-to-glass process. There's no cheating. There's no none of that. We make everything from scratch right here, so that's why... You know, it takes a little longer to, but so we can't produce in huge amounts, but we like what we do. What they also like doing is giving back to the community through several outreach initiatives. You have to do something. You have to do your part, you know, because that's 1913 is kind of based off of our great grandmother because that's when she started doing her food philanthropy kind of thing back in her neighborhood in Fort Worth. So it's the same concept, you know, just trying to do what we can to help out. What do people tell you? What do your customers tell you whenever they get that first taste of vodka? You know, what's interesting is like uh, back in the day when we were just sampling people on it, the thing that everybody wanted to do was taste it neat and warm, room temperature. And that's odd because nobody drinks vodka like that exactly. really. <laughs> but it was the greatest lesson because it helped us gear our process to that meet that palate and so once we started letting people sample it and their face wasn't like uh you know like immediately we knew we had something and we just kept going there 
we don't believe in the whole odorless, tasteless thing. Like, no, vodka has character. Vodka can have nuance. That's what I get from most people. One lady said one of the nicest things. She said, it drinks like a wine. So I had to put that to the test myself as we wrapped up an incredible tour at Highway Vodka. Smooth like wine. Easy. <laughs> I love it. Great story. And all this month, Highway Vodka will be giving $1 for every bottle sold to the United States Bartenders Guild to help those struggling through this pandemic. And you can find it at Specs, Total Wine. And don't forget to give some love to the folks at Lucille's. Yes. They do their pop-up on Thursdays. It's fantastic. Cheers. We'll be Cheers. right back. Well, welcome back to the show on this Friday Eve. I thought it was fabulous. Such a fun show. It was great. The drinks were great. The testing the products with Amy was fantastic. We the shoulders have her back. were strong. All it was right. fantastic. <laughs>